We're talking about renewing the mind. This is episode eight of the series. We're drawing our text largely from Isaiah 55, eight, especially this week. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Your ways are determined by the thoughts that you think repeatedly. Not just a single thought, but the thoughts that you repeatedly dwell on, that becomes your way. So understand that. God gives us His thoughts so that we can change our ways. Now, after God reveals His precepts, and a precept is a commandment, or it's an instruction, a direction. After he gives you one of those, he always follows it with a positive expectation. Here's a great example of this. It's found in Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. Give, one word of instruction, give, that's the precept, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, it will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. You know, uh, I love to eat crackers, and I eat soup and crackers quite a bit. And uh, anyway, I noticed something that in the last couple of years, due to the economy, the manufacturers of the crackers have not shrunk the boxes. They don't want to shrink the boxes because it would be very conspicuous. But what they've done is they've reduced each tube of crackers by about six to eight crackers. So when you open the box, you can see there's quite a bit of space between the tops of the four sections of crackers and the box. And so this is the opposite of what God is saying here. It will be given to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It will be put into your bosom. That is not what we see people doing. In fact, uh, we see people cutting, making it look like you're getting the same amount you're not. Now, it's not wrong to expect a positive outcome from the act of obedience that you do. I know a lot of people teach and a lot of people say you should obey just because God says it. And there's a certain quality in that. But let me tell you something. God himself is the one who lays out the positive expectation. He tells you what he's going to do. In fact, this is fascinating to me. Look at this. Give. That's my part. Now, everything that follows in this verse is God's part. And it will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom for with the same measure that you you use, it will be measured back to you. Now that's quite a bit. In other words, our part is very small. God's part is very detailed. And that's what happens. God begins to move in the most amazing ways, in details, to get you a blessing for your act of obedience. Good things come from a single act of obedience. Good things. I saw something just a couple of weeks ago in my own life where I spoke at a church, a small church, and a new church. Pastor's doing a great job. Couldn't say enough about how good he's doing. But when I was there and spoke, he handed me the honorarium, and the Holy Spirit very clearly, very clearly, while I was praying over his offering check to me, felt like I was supposed to tear it up. I did not receive it. I thanked him for letting me come, but I'd traveled there at my own expense. I, I didn't intend to do that. That was not my aim, and I'd never had that thought when I first went there. But while I was praying over that check, that's what God told me to do. Later that week, somebody turned around and did something amazing for me. I knew it was going to come because I know the Lord. And I thought, this is in direct result of what I did Last Sunday, when I did what I did, God turned this around and gave a great blessing to me. That's what we learn to do. Now, I don't give to get, but we do give to expect. If you are not expecting something, you're not listening to God. Uh, it's not wrong to expect a positive outcome. Listen to this one. I'll give you another example of this. We rightly divide the word. What does that mean? We look at more than one scriptural example to show you an idea. Here it is again, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1, 2, and 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right, meaning that you do it because it's right. Honor your father and mother, but then he adds the blessing, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Now, do you see that idea? There is the precept, obey your parents, honor your father and mother, but then he tells you why. Why? 
He says, it's not only right, but it will be well with you and you will live long on the earth. That's God's way. God always adds to his instructions or an instruction is a precept. He adds to the precepts by showing you a blessing that follows. God always provides examples of goodness and blessings with his precepts. So I'm going to take you back to this text that we've been reading all week. We're going to go to the very beginning of it. Uh, Not the very beginning, but we're going to go to the beginning of the thought we're after. Isaiah 55, 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. So how am I going to find the Lord? How do I seek him? Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Okay, The key to me knowing God, knowing who he is, seeing how he works, is I have to change my thought life. He will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Then he gives an illustration. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing that I sent it. And listen, he goes on to say, For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace, And the mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you. In other words, wherever you go, you'll feel like the whole world is rejoicing with you. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns shall come up the cypress tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. In other words... God says that his word works just like rain and just like snow. Cypress trees don't grow in a desert. They grow where it's really, really wet. God says, I'm going to rain on you like crazy. How does he do that? He does it with his thoughts. And whether you realize it or not, the rain of God's falling around you all the time. It's yours for the taking. You have to learn to go to the book and see how God thinks and begin to adjust your thinking to his thinking. Here's a great one. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Now, God has set up a system on this earth. It's found in the book of Romans chapter 13. That is that God has ordained that government punish criminals. There are times when the government does not do its job. Can I tell you this? It is not for you to be so consumed with hatred and to be filled with vengeance so that it takes up the rest of your life. And you spend every waking moment thinking about getting even with the people who've done you wrong. Perfect justice will never be experienced in this life. In other words, uh, lately we, we read about this. I saw it uh, Um, in a story just a couple of days ago uh, where they finally solved a cold case crime as to who killed a particular one woman. She was violently assaulted and then murdered. And they finally, with DNA, were able to tell who murdered her. Unfortunately, the guy who did the deed uh, died back in the 1980s. He died a long time ago. But can I tell you this? That man is more than likely in hell. Unless he repented of his sins and was genuinely sorrowful, that man is in hell. Today he is not getting by with what he did. But there is, that's not apparent in this life. You can't go somewhere and look at that. You can't find him in a prison. You can't hear a story of how he was beaten and treated badly for what he did. You can't see that. It is only in God's hands. And God says, vengeance is mine. You have to trust that. There are going to be times when you want desperately to get even 
with someone who's done you wrong. But you're not thinking God's thoughts. And the best vengeance is for you to go on and live a fruitful and blessed life. And listen to me carefully. Listen very carefully. A lot of us, when we've been wounded, when a loved one has been taken from us, maybe by a drunk driver or some other thing, uh, some other tragedy by an evil person, uh, we think we're doing a great disservice to that loved one by not being full of venom the rest of our lives. We're thinking that we're letting them down if we don't continually hate and go after that person. Listen, the best way to get even with the person who has done you wrong or your family wrong is to live a victorious life. Because it wasn't just that person who did you wrong, it was the devil. And behind him, his mission was to rob you and your family of joy, to keep you focused on the unfairness of life. He wants you to zero in on that and to be full of venom. You see, even in the story of Job, he lost 10 children, but he went on to a blessed life because he realized there is absolutely nothing I can do now to change what happened. I am going to live in victory. And only God, only God can do something like that. That is supernatural thinking, but that's the way God works. He gives us supernatural thoughts that overwhelm and overpower all of those negative things that come after us. Well, that's all the time I have for this today, but we're not done. We'll pick up with this tomorrow. See you then. I want to thank you for watching our podcast today. And if you really liked it, would you please give us a little thumbs up by clicking on that sign down below? And then I would encourage you to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future podcasts because they're all going to be good. And if you would like to support us financially, either with a one-time gift or recurring gift, you can do that by clicking on the link below are going to myfaithroots.com. Thank you so much for watching this program.